Ah, uh, just a quick update here. I'm at the famous welding by Riley Foster Steel. And this is that bus he started uh, the framing system on it. Remember, for the advertising, uh, this is the skin work that he has uh, done on this bus. It's pretty, pretty sensational work, if you ask me. Pretty sensational. Look at this. This is going to be a mobile gaming bus. It goes around and lets kids go inside the bus and play video games. Arcade, kind of a video arcade bus. Man, good work. Left the wire there because you still, by, you know, and, you know, the. Uh, code you still got to have marker lights on the bus obviously to run it down a road legally look at the work I mean like a laser look at that It's all skinned out in aluminum sheets, both sides. Good morning, Thomas. Good morning, Riley. Man, you do good work, son. Man, I am just about ready to get this bus rolled out of here. You done with it? Yeah, I am. It, it Had we not got caught in four and five days of rain, uh, it would have been out of here a lot quicker. Well, yeah, that was uh, two weeks ago uh, when I first, the, the first video I did with you when you were f putting the framing together. Yeah, but yeah, it turned out really good. I'm, Man, I'm impressed it with it. Once they get it wrapped, it's going and to And here's the other really side. Sweet. Oh, yeah, that's right. A wrap's going to go on here. Yeah, vinyl wrap for um, advertisement. Yeah. And uh, it, it, I actually had one sheet left over, and that's what I had estimated for the job, so that ain't too bad. Well... Kudos on the work, man. Talk so about I, attention I, to detail. I can honestly say I never want to wrap another bus. <laughs> say, say, this is your first experiment and your last experiment yeah, yeah. with uh, yeah. advertising. <laughs> it just, it's time consuming. It yeah. Just, How uh, many hours you got wrapped up in it? Probably about 50 hours total. Mm. And that don't sound like a lot, but the big problem was every piece of tubing has to be cut because you may not know this going down the road, but... To look at a bus, it looks fairly straight. It is not straight. There, you can look down at now and see that the windows tilt in. Yeah, you see that the- Yeah, you 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 uh, bend the metal to the curvature of the bus. Yeah, and it just, oh, it was so time consuming. Yeah. But I think once they get that- What do you say, you got 50 hours in it? About 50 hours total. And I realize that people say, well, that ain't that much, but over a couple of weeks, you know, dragging the tools out here and working on it and, and getting it, I, I wanted to make sure the round the wheels were nice and rolled, clean looking. And you can see the skirt runs all the way across the bottom to where in a regular bus, it does not do that. Right. So and you left all the areas where they have these hatches and under uh, belly storage compartments open. Yeah, the battery box. And oh, the, the battery box, okay. Yeah, and the storage and the door. The fuse panel just below the window. Oh, the emergency exit door or whatever fuse panel door. Oh, oh yeah, on this driver's side right here, this? Yeah, there's a fuse panel. Oh, door. this is a fuse panel door, okay. Yeah. yeah, and see that? They want to be able to access it, yeah. Get in there. And, oh, wow, look at all that, yeah. And see, I actually had wow. to disconnect the air hose running to the stop sign that swings out and and take care of stuff like that. But again, it's it was a job, but it paid well, so that's, that, you know, that's... The, that's what I do. Well, that's what we all are in business for is to get paid well. That's right. That's right. So, yeah, because I start my deck job uh, starting tomorrow. Oh, fun, fun. Oh, yeah, four days of uh, tearing apart a deck and then rebuilding it. Well, you're going to have a beautiful weather. Cause it's all you know, that that's the thing. Oh, the weather has been gorgeous the last four days. Yep. That's... And it looks like it's going to last all the way through uh, Saturday. I'm ready. Um, oh, you and me um, both, my friend. Dry days. Yeah. Yeah, we could, we're just sick of walking through the woods and stuff. It's like 
just mud swamp. That's the problem here in North Carolina is that we've had so much rain since uh, basically November of last year up until about, what, nine days ago? Yes. I mean, really, we have had so much rain in North Carolina. Uh, we're like nine inches over our average. Yeah, and, and when just it'll look like it's going to dry up a little bit and the bottom will fall out. And yeah. And rain is just like walking on a sponge. Carolina clay does not soak up water well either. So. <laughs> <laughs> isn't, that the, isn't that the damn truth? Oh, my God. I just finally got my uh, uh, row set on my garden, and I couldn't even get out there uh, all, all year, really, because so, it was so muddy. But, uh, yeah, man, this is awesome. But, yeah, the, the weather, oh, thank God. Yeah. And also, uh, what uh, he's having rebuilt, too, is a Yanmar, an older Yanmar, 36 horsepower. Yeah, it's a 36 horsepower. It's about an 84 model Yanmar four-wheel drive front-end loader. And I've got to get it out of here, hopefully sell it to someone. Might be even selling it to me. But what I, the reason I even bring that up is because... There's another gentleman that is highly educated and uh, very good with his hands, uh, uh, just like Riley is a, pretty much an artist. This guy's making uh, the repairs on this uh, Yanmar, and he's making his own gaskets and everything. <laughs> Let me show you. See, this is the dying trades for all you young folks out there that don't know nothing about real work and craftsmanship. <laughs> this is how it's done. <laughs> Introduce yourself to my uh, YouTube fans. Samuel Wilson. Hey, Samuel. We're going to man's transmission on his tractor. He stripped the uh, ring gear and pinion out in. I had to put a new ring gear and pinion in it. You're hand making your own gaskets and everything. Yes, sir. Nice. Well. And also, do you do heavy construction and rebuilding and pretty much anything, right? Yeah, a little bit of farming, uh, automotive, trucks. A bit everything. Well, that's great. It's a pleasure meeting you, too. It seems like your phone's going off in the background there, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we'll let him get back to his work. But, uh, yeah, this is, this, is, this is what I've been preaching on my channel for a lot of years in regards to uh, the hard trades, the craftsman trades. It's a dying... It's really a dying art. I know uh, there's been talk about uh, putting trade schools back in the schools, uh, and I know there are some, but when it comes to some of this older school of thought, you know, uh, taking old equipment and rebuilding it, repairing it, salvaging it without a manual or out any instructions, just knowing uh, how to fix it. Uh, that type of uh, uh, trade is dying quick, and a lot of the younger guys just don't want to get into uh, this type of work. It's a shame. Because there's such a high demand for uh, people with talents. Um, I know out in California, there's a lot of guys out there that are good metal workers because they do a lot of uh, auto restorations and classic car restoration, muscle car restorations. Here on the East Coast, a lot of the trades that uh, are still out there are, you know, really the old mom and pop shops. You know, if you can find a good mechanic, um, you know, out in the country, uh, it's, it's worth uh, knowing these people. It's really worth knowing these people because here's the perfect example. If you go to the city, if you go into the city and you try to find specific craftsmen to do specific work and they have a shop, someplace you can actually take something to them and they repair it, that is really hard to find, really hard to find because a lot of the things that we've got now in our society is big box, uh, you know, your oil change you know when they say uh bring it to our car center you know for complete you know auto service believe it or not really all they're doing is changing the oil and checking the air in your tire and it's really not considered full service even though that's what they claim you know jiffy lube and places like that you know believe it or not they're not 
service centers. They're not car specialists. They're not anything, really. Uh, they're just a bunch of oil change monkeys, really. So when you get and you find people that have this type of talent, get to know them, learn from them, and one day you can pass that skill down to others because really a lot of this type of work is slowly dying to the point where you won't find very many people who will be able to do this kind of work in the future unless you go to a third world country where they still have to depend on their self-reliance to be able to, uh, you know, to get things done. Famous, I doubt it. On my channel, the only people that visit my channel is a bunch of preppers and a bunch of retired guys. <laughs> no women. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. No, I got a bunch of really, uh, <laughs> it's, it's funny. You know, when it comes to my channel, it's not like, uh, you know, we're trending or anything like that. But, you know, the the 22, almost 22,000 subscribers on my channel, you guys are awesome. Because really, without you guys, we wouldn't have a channel. We wouldn't have nothing to talk about. And definitely wouldn't have no videos to show you because I wouldn't be doing anything. <laughs> so, we feel fortunate uh, for that, that there's a lot of hardcore gearheads out there. And you guys support our channel. And remember, support Riley's channel, too. It's Welding by Riley Foster. Uh, and, you know, he's a good guy. Obviously, you can see he's got damn good work, <laughs> you know. But he's just like me. He's a hoarder. He's got too much shit. <laughs> you got too much shit out here, man. Never Pretty, too much. Yeah, he, Riley commented on my video when I was uh, at the Doomsday Prepper uh, 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 auction, and he and, and and one of the comments was, "Yeah, one day we'll be visiting Tom at his <laughs> his. You know, when he dies, he's going to go get all his shit. And and I'd rather wait till Riley dies to come out here and get all his shit. But this is all going to go to your son. Yeah, that's right. That's right." Yeah, you got whether you, he likes it or not. Whether he likes it or not, right, right. Yeah, yeah, that that's it. Gotta get the kids involved, right? Oh, and, and you in can, the old man habits. One day we'll do a video on the uh weapon of mass destruction, the trebuchet. Actually I, I got that featured in one of my videos. Yeah. yeah, the forge yeah, the forging machine or the no, the siege, siege. The barricade sieging machine. We'll use this when the shit hits the fan and we get attacked by a foreign army. <laughs> then we can throw shit at them. It will throw a 10 pound projectile over a football field. No matter. On fire. Yes. We'll yes. light that Whatever sucker. <laughs> I was gonna say, that's what the Romans do. They light them on fire that's and then right. they throw them at the, the Saxons. Nice. It, it will throw a bowling ball that far. Oh, I believe it. So, bowling ball, that would go through a house. <laughs> well, the next castle that you you see that we need to uh, uh, siege, oh, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to bring that along with us. Uh, that you got a trailer? Yep. It, <laughs> Good. It runs on a flatbed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, guys. This is me, Tom. Riley. And Riley. Yeah. Out here in the country. And uh, our new friend. Sam Wilson. Sam Wilson. We're all in the sunshine today. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Y'all stay tuned. Stay blessed. We're out of here. Hey, you stole my damn bitch.